Um, Christine Savane, it's so good to have you in studio, the founder and director of Anno's One Fine Day. Um, yesterday, I came in um, for the launch and I was wondering, I met so many people, I'm like, I know them, I know them. What are they doing in Kibra? And what, why is um, just the art scene such a big deal? And we're going to get into that. But the other thing that I was asking myself, a lot of times uh, when people want to come up with projects to perhaps uplift people or bring in development, they're always thinking about entrepreneurship, business, and so on. But you decided to open an art gallery, why? <laughs> <laughs> and an art center, why? Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. So basically it's because my background I'm a, is I'm, I'm an actress. Yes. I'm an actress and I'm a creative film producer. And uh, when I started acting some years back, um, it was so crazy and interesting because I realized that we didn't have many art classes mm. happening in informal settlements. Yes. And as an actor, I kept on thinking, what, you know, how can this be done? Mm -hmm. And I used to do a lot of street theater. Mm -hmm. I worked for an NGO called Safe Kenya, yes. which still does safe theater. Yes. And one of the trustees came to visit and she saw what we were doing and she was really thrilled. And we had so many children coming in. You know, we would go into a slum and put up the bus and do a performance, mobilize people. Yes. And so many people, over 2,000 people would be standing there and they'd watch what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And we'd also had so many kids. And so she was like, what can we do? Yes. And I said to her, let's, let's do an arts program. Mm -hmm. And for her, it was because she lost her son who was really talented. He was a musician yes. and he died at the age of 21. He was called Arno and that's why our art center is called Arno. Yes. It's in memory of him. Yes. And you know, we did a pilot project where we went to Majengo St. John's and we just bought wool and socks and we made puppets with kids. And they were so happy, so thrilled. So she went back to the UK and came back and she published his book. She made some money and she came back and for six weeks we did a whole program where we did dance, music, ballet, creative writing, visual art, yes. acrobatics and circus, African dance. And it was so interesting such that the kids were able to express themselves, mm -hmm. they were having fun. And she brought in a whole load of people from the UK and in Germany. And, you know, I put in a lot of, uh, you know, having all our Kenyan team so that we can be able to communicate. And also for the fact that once the mentors from the UK left, then the Kenyan team would take over. Yes. And so over the years, this is what we've done. And here we are. Yeah. Because eventually we needed to have an end game. And I kept on thinking, many times you have organizations that start up mm -hmm. and then after some time, um, maybe people get bored, yes. you lack funds, mm -hmm. and then the organization that just dies. Yeah. And I thought, why should we not have our own space? Mm -hmm. Because we've been working in schools. So have our own space where the art can be taken to the next level, yeah. so, such that you do it professionally. Mm -hmm. So, hence yeah. the building. Yeah. Yes. You've mentioned a little bit about your career in arts and especially in acting. We know you from the screens. Mm -hmm. uh, but how did art change your life? You've mentioned the challenges, but I'm sure there are other, a lot of positive stuff that happened. How did it change your life? I mean, in, in many ways, because as an actress, as an actor, you're able to go into different spaces. I've traveled as an yes. actor mm -hmm. and as a film producer i've gone to film festivals mm -hmm. i've been to which one is the most memorable i kind of can guess but you tell us oh come <laughs> on i've been to the oscars exactly <laughs> <laughs> i worked on a film that uh, was nominated for an oscar yes. watu water i was production manager and i did a lot of producer support and that was really different because it was a film that um was based on a, a true story mm -hmm. we had the al shabaab bus attack in mandara and we made that film together with students from Hamburg Media University. Yes. And after making the film, you know, we've done a lot of screenings, impact screenings, whereby we take it to communities and people watch the film and you're able to talk to them. And people ask questions because when you watch such kind of films, people, it triggers people to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to discuss and look at what is it that could have been done better? Yes. Why are these people getting, why are these people being radicalized? And when you find such questions you're able to answer it's we find ways of how we are able to change people's behaviors 
attitudes, minds, mm -hmm. and a lot of young people, you know, the films that I've also worked on um, together with um, Nick Redding and Safe Kenya, yes. you know, they're on Netflix. Nisisi, which was based on the post-election yes. violence, yes. Watatu, which was also on radicalization, yes. Daughters I Liberty, which was on um, HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. You know, these are um, films that have a social message yes. that change people's attitude mm -hmm. and people are able to you know, you're able to learn through films. Yes. I believe education does not necessarily happen in a classroom. Mm -hmm. It can happen anywhere. Yes. And art is such a powerful tool to communicate because it's creative yeah. and people get bored of sitting in lectures. Yes. So if you watch a film that has a message and the film is funny, mm -hmm. interesting, and... Uh, you know, yeah, you get to it be easily brings behavioral change. Totally, yeah, totally. It's much better than a lecture. But when you have you now decided to like put your acting career in the back seat <laughs> and now do more for the children in Kenya? Yes. yes. So what I did for the past, I think. Um, 10 years, I put my acting career on a back seat mm -hmm. and I focused on working on the children's program, which we've been doing for the past 18 years. Yes. And I've seen a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. I've seen young children who I've met when they're nine years. Yes. I have some of them working with me in the office and I've seen a whole transformation yes. because the art is expressive. So through the art, they're able to talk to you about issues that are affecting them. Mm -hmm. And you find that a lot of times parents send kids to their school, yes. hoping that the teachers are going to talk to them. Teachers expect parents to talk to their children, but then you realize no one is talking to these kids, they're talking to themselves. And so for us as artists, you know, I have a team of 14 professional artists who teach all these disciplines, and they are able to talk to these children. And we've developed a system where they trust us. They're able now to talk about stuff. And we constantly find ourselves just guiding them. You know, they ask you questions. They will talk to you about sex education. Yes, you know, yes. we know very well, like in our African yes, culture, yes. talking about sex is a taboo. Yes. So we find ourselves guiding them, talking to them about drugs, mm -hmm. crime, things just, you know, we're, we're sort of like their role models, their big brothers and sisters, yes. and we just guide them yeah. and it changes their attitudes. Um, I must say not all of them become really, you know, they yes. change, you know, yeah. some of them fall off, mm -hmm. but then majority of them are the ones who change their behaviors. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they always come back and say, eh, you guys yes. really, really helped me change my yes. behavior. Yeah. And I'm now deciding to take this career path. Mm -hmm. And we also encourage them to do well in education. Yes. Because apart from the arts, yes, education is also very important. Yes. yes. And, and yesterday, I, when I was watching them dance, there was ballet dancing, there yes. was German music, uh, <laughs> African music. How does that impact a child, just opening up the world for them through art? I think art can make you travel in different forms. You know, when we started in 2006, we didn't have any ballet in the country. Mm. So we started this, and it was a foreign thing. Ballet is a foreign um, type of dance. And people embraced it. At the beginning, it was a bit difficult. But then when we started just training these kids, and they loved it, and slowly by slowly, you know, they come to understand that, oh, wow, this can actually work. But then, of course, because we don't have, we didn't have, then we didn't have, like, proper, proper, professional spaces like dance spaces we just used classrooms and when you look at ballet you realize they need to have like a proper dance studio with bars and mirrors they need to have proper shoes proper attires for yes. them to and they need to dance at least almost every day for them to become ballerinas wow but you see now working with schools we're only given one day a week yes and so that was a challenge and a gap so we decided why don't we have a, an art center where they can be able to train this. And you realize, once you expose them to these things, you know, we have kids who've appeared in international films. Yes. They've gone all the way to Malta to shoot, to Germany. Wow. We have ballet girls who've gone to France. Yes. We have some of them who've gone to Italy to perform. And for them just traveling from Kibera to Italy, from Kibera to, Mother, to France, from Kibera to Malta in Germany, you know, it's, it just opens up their world in a different way. Mm. They get to see things and they come back and say, wow. Yes. You know? Yes. And these are opportunities that they would probably never have gotten if we 
didn't start the program or if they were not in the program. Yes. Yeah. And, and when you look at the days when you started and now, more than 18 years later, has this perception for arts change that it, people can be told, you know, young children can be told, actually, this is a career path uh, that can be successful and you can take up? I think it is because, you know, I live on art. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think because when you look at... Um, there's so many um, uh, young people who are creative and young people actually love doing things that are fun, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, in life, we know <clears throat> yes. not everyone is academically talented That's and not true. everyone is artistically talented. Mm -hmm. So if you're artistically talented and you're nurtured and you're pushed to the next level, then you're able to actually even make a living out of it, yes. right? Yes. And you could be academically talented, but then generally in life if you don't get lucky and get a proper job if you have a, an artistic skill mm -hmm. you know you can actually create your own job yes you know you can create your podcast you can earn a living mm -hmm. you can create you know you can um create your own music yeah. and you can earn a living so it's almost an alternative to to not an actually not an alternative it's it's almost something that you have as a backup plan, yes, right? Yes. But you can actually nurture it, mm -hmm. push it to the next level yeah. and make a living out of and, it. And it's your only plan. Uh, but I, I was looking at the model that you have, the various trainers, uh, and it's been a successful model. Is it a model that you're looking uh, to probably have throughout, take up <laughs> throughout uh, the country? So ideally, you know, when we started out, it was just, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't learn how to do this. Yes. You know, you just try out and you take, I, I'm, I'm such a risk taker. And I say, okay, let's try. Is it working? Okay, yes. this is working. Mm -hmm. And then with time, of course, you make mistakes, but then you sit back, you reevaluate and say, oh, this, this work, this doesn't work. So we sort of feel like, and up to now, the fact that we now have a proper art center that is running, that employs about 15 young yes. people, yeah. you realize this is a module that can be replicated in every different slum, mm -hmm. every rural area, and it can employ young people. It can solve a huge problem of young, young people and employment in this yes. country. Yes. So we also have set up the same module in rural Malawi, mm -hmm where we have a team of eight teachers who are doing the same thing. So I think it's something that can be replicated. Yeah. We're super happy for people to copy mm -hmm. as long as they do it the right way. Yes. And you know, who knows? Yes. And we just give chances to young people to explore and nurture their talents. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I met, uh, during the introduction I was talking about it, I met so many celebrities from all <laughs> over the world. We had like five uh, ambassadors and I was wondering, so uh, what is this thing they're seeing that we are not seeing? So you tell us. <laughs> I know they are coming to support you, but there was so much interest. So you tell us there might be an opportunity for some of us right there. Well, I just think it's the whole thing about keep choosing a goal and sticking to it mm -hmm. and getting people who support you through it. Yes. So for me, I try to choose a network. And I try as much as possible because, of course, you, have, you must have integrity for you to be able, for people to be able to trust you. Yes. You must, have, you, you must have the patience and the consistency for you to be able to push through. Mm -hmm. And just, I'm never ever scared of meeting people and telling them, yes. this is what I do. And I'm so proud when I meet people, I say, oh, by the way, I'm an actress and I'm a filmmaker mm -hmm. and I actually run a charity and I'm doing this. Yes. And I ask you, what do you do? And you tell me, and I say, how can you collaborate? Can you come and see what we're doing? Yeah. And I invite people to Kibera so that they also see that Kibera is a safe place. Yeah. There's a lot of people think, oh, Kibera, oh, Kib people get scared. But yes. you, you were there yesterday. Yes. And, and I've been there many times. You've been there many times. <laughs> yes. And it's actually a safe space. Mm -hmm. And it's just the consistency, building trust with people, mm -hmm. and allowing people, showing people what you have, the milestones that you you get through yes. you know for over 18 years we've had huge huge milestones they might be small small but we always try as much as possible to just be like oh you stop and you look back and say that's yes, a milestone yes. you count and you move and you move yes yes and with the interest i saw there is the west also looking for all other alternatives and um art and talent in africa 
I just think, you know, with, with the world and things changing, you know, we, we've already moved from analog and we're all digital. There's yes. so much stuff that, and there's a lot of collaboration that's happening. And for me, I believe art connects different artists around the world. Mm -hmm. And art is a unique language. You can communicate with someone who is in Italy, yes. same thing, but in a different way, but through art. Mm -hmm. And it's just that connection where you find that um, I'm doing something, but then someone else in France or in Germany or in UK, they're doing the same similar thing. And then you realize, oh, and we can connect through Instagram. And they go like, oh, by the way, I'm doing actually the same thing. And you connect and you, you know, you. Yes. And because we also have different cultures. And that's why for us, we've had a lot of people coming in. We've brought in a lot of European mentors coming in, training. And of course, Someone knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. Mm. You know, when we first started, um, I think in our third year, Marie Steinman, who came in as an artist, yes. you know, she's married to Tom Tikwa. Yes. And Tom came in and he was, he's a film director. Mm -hmm. He was like, what can I do? Yes. And he set up this whole thing on One Fine Day Films. And so many people have benefited from the One Fine Day Films and learned how to make films. And that's now a whole different thing. So I just sort of feel like it's just the connections that people make yes. that can easily move you to the next level. And, you know, you never know. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the, yesterday, the guest of honor was uh, the CS for Sports, Ababu. And I, as he was speaking, he spoke a lot about what the government wants to do for the arts. Are you truly getting that? Uh, support from the government. Tricky question, but you can be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the kind of a person who says, let me get started. Yes. Let me not sit down and wait for the government. The government has a lot of things they're doing. Yeah. Mm. So in our structure, how we did it, we said, let's get started. So now with the Art and Centre, you know, we can now ask them, guys, what can you do for us? Yes. It's actually even easier. Mm -hmm. Because right now, we've, they actually see the milestones. Yes. They actually see you're serious. Yes. The work you've put in. Yeah. Because we've bought the piece of land. We've got the funding to make the, the building. It's now finished. So it's so easy because then they can meet you at least somewhere. Mm -hmm. So they are really supportive. Yes. The local um, uh, MP is very supportive. Mm -hmm. The local chief, through the chief, you know, they really support our project and they offer every, like, they're like, what can we do for yes, you? Yes, you know, yes. and you know, we don't necessarily, sometimes it's just about the money. Sometimes it's about security. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about talking to the community. Sometimes yes. it's just about, you know, being there, offering the support that you need. And I think with the current government, they, they have a huge um, uh, plan for the creative industry, yes. which I think it's so good because the creative industry contributes a lot to the creative economy of this country. Yes. And I know with time we will get there. Yes, that, yeah. that's a promise that the government made, especially during the campaign. Yeah. But as we close, just my, my last question, yeah. what is the future uh, for, particularly for you and for Anna's uh, Art Center? Mm -hmm. Where do you see it five years from now, 10 years from now? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I see a, a safe space which is in a community that young children, teenagers, the whole community can use it. This is the reason why we built it in Kibera, so that it's the community there that can use it. I want people from that community, even us guys when we're long gone, they can still take it on and move on. Yes. I would love people to copy this model and replicate it in their different spaces, mm -hmm. like people to create different spaces that can easily be able for young people to create their own jobs, a safe space for young girls, you know, especially yes. those who are living in very underprivileged communities. Yes. You know, when you have a safe space, then you're able to, to have a peace of mind. Mm. And, you know, you're able to create, you're able to do whatever it is that you want to do. Yes. And you see, all these young people have dreams, you know, yeah. and if given a chance, if given a safe space that they can express themselves or they can pursue their dreams, they would achieve what they want. Yes. The sky is the limit. Yes. I have one question for you, but my director tells me that we have to take a commercial break. We continue with the interview shortly after that. Okay.
performance he's putting up here. Definitely. Shot. Served well. Haidara with the rebound. Oh, that is wide there, but very good goalkeeping there from Kofi. Just a little bit slow there from uh, Bukina Faso on the rebound. Across Africa, a new era has begun, connecting us with one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Get ready for the captivating return of the FKF Premier League exclusively on KBC. Brace yourself for the thrill of football as 18 teams battle it out for glory. Every week, KBC brings you not one, but two heart-pounding matches delivering the best football action right to your living room. The stakes are higher than ever. The league champion takes home a handsome prize of 5 million shillings and also earns the honor of representing Kenya in the prestigious CAF Champions League. Feel the adrenaline. Experience the suspense and join the roar of the crowd as we celebrate the return of Kenya's football legacy. The FKF Premier League, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 and KBC Radio Stations. Save the date, mark your calendars and get ready for the ultimate football spectacle. Coming to you live only on KBC. KBC, your true sports partner. Welcome back. As you know, KBC, we are always supporting the creatives. And I was speaking to Christine yesterday. I happened to visit uh, Kibra, where she was officially opening her art center. How have you, in your experience, and you've talked about working in Kibra when it comes to arts uh, with the young people for almost 18 years. How have you noticed children change when they come in? What kind of citizens do they become after a few years at the art center? <laughs> it's very interesting. So first of all, when we go into a school mm -hmm. and we basically go into informal schools. Yes. So the kids, uh, we say to them, this is what we're doing, and they choose what they want to go into. And first of all, when they come into these classes, they're very shy, they can't even look at you. Yes. And then now with time, because you're doing art, you're having fun, you're leveling up with them, you know, it helps them build their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. It helps them build their confidence, their postures, yes. their ways of speaking, and even for them to be able to ask questions. And that has really helped. We have cho children who've grown through our program who are now also running their own organizations mm. in different areas yes. because of just what the skills that they picked from that. And you see, for us, we just don't do arts. We talk to them about discipline. Mm. We give them life skills. Yes. We tell them that this is what is out there in the real world. Yes. So then they are able to know that in the real world, this is what happens. And it's mm. not a big problem. Yes. And they always know that they have someone to talk to when they get stuck. And, you know, it's, it's, it really, really helps them in so many ways. Yes. 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 Now I'm convinced why you probably didn't start incubation or <laughs> <laughs> a business school. I'm convinced. And yesterday, uh, I could see the confidence in the children, the discipline, just even the pride as they were reciting totally. uh, and as they were acting. They were just enjoying the time that we, they had. And I could see they're certainly going to be completely different children children after their training. Thank you so much, Christine, for sharing your world with us and we wish you all the best. Thank you for having me.